Hey, what's going on everybody? It's video 44 coming at you another video. So just continuing the uh, Warriors Ben Simmons conversation hearing some guys talk about it early this morning um, and and my position is Sort of like Dennis Schroeder's situation in a way I Want to throw the disclaimer out that of course none of us have heard Ben Simmons speak Just like none of us have heard Dennis Schroeder speak so the tangent or whatever I say right here it's contingent upon the reports of what's being said in this situation being true. And if they are not true, which I'm open to the possibility of the case, then this rant is not going to be placed properly. And I'm aware of that, as I said. So that's my disclaimer first. But my thing is this. You know, Ben Simmons is asking to be traded to one of the California teams because of the nature of his contract and the nature of how we last saw him with the reputation being as it is and all that other stuff that's going on, the whole conversation surrounding Ben Simmons' name right now, I don't, I don't believe he has any leverage to demand uh, what he's asking for or anything at this moment other than to, to get back on the basketball floor and play for the Philadelphia 76ers. This is the problem. This is why I, I try to speak on stuff the way that I do, even though I have a lot to learn. I want to point people in the right direction of understanding the most important part of kind of understanding what you're involved in in the business of, of the NBA. And that's the salary cap. And not only how it works as it pertains to the numbers fluctuating, but understanding value and true market value um, and how to pro properly value yourself. And most importantly, why it's very important to listen to your representation. Uh, your, 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 your agents, you got to listen to them. You got to let them make sound advice to you. You know what I mean? You can't let them look crazy by you putting your name out there saying that you are trying to do something that will completely botch any negotiation possibilities they have in your name. And that's what happened with Dennis Schroeder, unfortunately, if the reports are true about what he was asking for. And now Ben Simmons is in a similar situation because of how he played. Um, you know, and how it was reported he played. And that's key because we saw him play one way and then the media will tell us about what they saw and will point out all the negative things that they saw. They won't talk about some of the more positive things that he does when discussing what he's asking for. A lot of times the conversation, oh, Ben Simmons didn't shoot, oh, Ben Simmons didn't, hit the, didn't dunk in the last play. Oh, ben. And so that paints a picture that's not a full picture as to where if someone who's a basketball um, detailed person who knows his game is going to look at what he did in the vacuum and say, okay, this is what we got from the best of them. This is what we got from the worst of them. And this is where his value is now. No one's really having that conversation. So the word is Ben Simmons sucks and he's asking to be moved to the, to the LA teams or the California teams. And that's, that's why the media can be kind of damning and why representation is so important when you, when you're an athlete, because you're dealing with the forces, especially if you're a name like Ben Simmons, Maybe not some of the lesser names, but a force that basically is interested in aligning their own interests. And they will they will use your name and whatever is best, whether it be you doing good or you doing bad, to promote what they got going on, their agenda. And that will affect what happens uh, here in negotiations and when you're trying to move teams, stuff like that. <laughs> they control what we think, the people. And that controls the market to a degree at times. So Ben Simmons is dealing with a tricky thing because people are only basically paying attention to the negative aspects of his game. And because of it, it's driving his value to a hell of a place. If we would have looked at what he did and said, okay, Ben Simmons struggle, 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 and then talked about all the great things that he does constantly, 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 build him up as great as if that uh, the non-attempt three-point shots and a non-attempt dunk at the end of the playoff game was only a blip in the game. If they would have focused on how great he was defensively, showed us highlights, how great he was defensively, you know how high his value would be regardless of what we just saw. And that, this is not me saying the media is unjustly uh, describing what we're seeing from Ben Simmons. That's, that's not at all the angle I'm saying. What I'm saying is Ben Simmons' value and his reputation is being manipulated by the media and because of it, it's important not to throw any fire on that by asking for something unrealistic. And the only way to understand that what you're asking for is unrealistic is to understand the landscape, the cap, all that other stuff. And that's why it's important. I think athletes need to understand. It's a, a lot of times athletes come in with confidence, right? They understand what they think they need to understand because a lot of things seem basic. Go to the NBA, play well. 
get paid. Go to the NBA, don't get hurt. Align myself on a team that makes sense. Higher representation, name my price. It's like, no, it doesn't work that way. But if you assume it works that way, and you walk in with your chest out thinking you know what's going to happen to you, you end up asking for stuff like Dennis Schroeder and Ben Simmons are, for which they have no leverage to ask for, allegedly, if they're asking for that at all. So it's like, my thing is, you gotta, you have to be smart enough in this environment to ask the right questions before putting your chest out and saying what you deserve. Because it's not you that controls that. It's the other surrounding forces, including media, circumstances, team needs, uh, what the last guy just did when he won the championship. All that stuff has to do with what your value is going to be. You are not solely in control of your own fate. You're not. That's why it's so important to get aligned with the right representation. So they can kind of use the leverage they have as a company to help facilitate your desires as an athlete. Because you don't have the leverage alone, but because representation has different athletes in the same league, they can leverage different favors they have from other situations to help you along in yours. So that gives the illusion that the athlete has this favor or the, or the leverage when he doesn't. His representation does. You see what I'm saying? That is why it's important to ask questions even though your confidence is sky high. This is chess, not checkers. You're walking into a game and you're playing the wrong rules. You could be the best athlete in the world, but you're playing the wrong way. <laughs> and that's what happens when a lot of in, uh, in, um, athletes, particularly in the NBA, because I don't follow other sports like that, try to move themselves around mimicking other players who did have leverage without understanding leverage. You know, and, and it's like, I think that the NBA is getting to a point where we, we are starting to understand that it's important to know these things. You got fans like myself, who are preaching this stuff on the channels I think more and more people will be like myself in that way and we'll stop having these little goofy conversations about who's better, better between KD and, 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 and LeBron James and start having conversations like this that'll help all of us understand what we need to do all of us understand what questions to ask all of us understand that confidence and skills alone ain't enough to help you make it in the league <laughs> it's not it's not if it were the greatest player in the game right now LeBron James would not have put together his own management team to facilitate his career. This is what he did. LeBron James is a genius. So LeBron James understood the landscape. He said, even if I'm the biggest superstar in the world, I saw Kobe try to demand his way out of LA and had trouble. Right? <laughs> Seeing Michael Jordan's bulls disintegrate right before him. Basically forced him to leave in the bulls because the team sucked so bad. He had to retire or go somewhere else, basically. LeBron James didn't want to have nothing like that happen to him. <laughs> he wanted to make sure that he could leave the organizations he ended up with. Because unlike the Bulls and unlike L.A., the Cleveland situation was bad. So as far as I could tell, he was like, look, this is what I need. I need my own management team. I don't need to be hiring no representation. I got some people that I know. They know what they need to know. We can, we can help process them through the process of making clutch happen and make clutch. We get a bunch of people around us get as many clients as we can do the right thing with those clients and when it's time for me to move I ain't gonna have no issue I ain't gonna hire him I'm not hiring him I'm hiring me <laughs> hey we're the best in the game and we're gonna facilitate me to the Lakers I'm not gonna be hovering back and forth between Cleveland and Miami I can go wherever I want because I have the leverage Ben Simmons is not gonna create his own management team I don't imagine overnight so he needs to make sure he has the right management team situation which he may I'm not saying he needs to switch his management I don't know that to be the case uh, but he needs to make sure that he's following his management team and, and his representation with the leverage that they have so that they can facilitate him to the to the teams that he wants to go to without the leverage he has himself based on his skill set, based on what the reputation of his game is, based on whatever different factors that go into it. I hope that that was easy to follow, but I know I'm, I'm wordy as hell. I know that. But what I will say is this. At the end of the day, Dennis Schroeder, his situation for me, it's kind of a better one to describe what I'm trying to express to you express to you guys. When you don't have the right representation or you don't follow the representation you have and their advice, you can find yourself in situations where you misplace your value and ultimately are mistaken and look crazy and stupid and all these different laughable things, asking for certain things that you'd ask for, otherwise with the same confidence that you use to propel you to be the best player you are. Um, 
that same confidence works against you in this case. That, that immovable confidence that drove you all the way to the league, that's not the game. That's not the way to apply that confidence, you know? You got to apply it in smarter, savvier, different degrees of separation kind of ways. You can't just take yourself to the plug and say, hey, give me what you got. No, no, no. You got to, you got to find some people to co-sign for you. You got to find some representation that will say you, all, you are that dude who will have the leverage, the favors, basically, with those guys to, to see to it that they'll do some business with you because you don't you don't have the represent you don't have the capital to buy yourself into these situations and see that's another thing that's not really possible but a guy like LeBron James is so wealthy he could buy his own contract out with the Lakers if he wants to go to say the Sixers right now I don't know if it would be possible but monetarily he could do that um, within the rules it may not be possible but what I'm saying is that's the type of stuff you need to have in your back pocket in order to get yourself out of these situations that you want to be out of. When you don't have that, you need help. Um, so, so here's another thing that has uh, has has me thinking as well. The fit with Golden State. I don't know. As I mentioned last night, I had I'm not, I made a video on it last night. I didn't know the framework of the deal. Still don't. But. The one thing that I listened to that these guys were saying uh, about Ben Simmons going to the Warriors is that, yes, he's he a deficient shooter right now, of course. Will he remain a deficient shooter coming into this, this season? We believe so. Yeah, he's not going to turn into a 40-point shooter. He doesn't even attempt shots. But he's going to the Golden State Warriors. Uh, there is no reason why he can't link up with his teammates and spend the duration of his time in Golden State, however that long that is, learning and perfecting his shot. Not trying to be Clay and Steph, but perfecting his own shot and learning how to shoot it with confidence and learning how to overcome whatever needs to be overcome so he can shake off what's going on here. Because I'll tell you this, this situation is very simple. If he was somebody who attempted a couple threes, maybe shot 30% from three, that's terrible. But what you got to understand is this, it's only terrible in the sense that he's not making the threes he's attempting. Those threes going up are still beneficial to the team because the threat of the three-point shot being taken keeps the defense honest and, and ultimately keeps guys from collapsing in on your favorite stars who are on the team. So in the Warriors' case, it would be Steph and Clay having more and more defenses thrown at them than they've probably ever seen because no one has to guard Clay at all. I mean, excuse me, uh, Ben Simmons at all. Even with Draymond Green shooting poorly from three, you leave him alone long enough, he gonna hit one. He gonna clank a couple of them, he maybe even airball one, but a couple of them gonna go in. You're gonna pay for leaving him like that. So if you if, if you leave him like that this game, yeah, maybe it works out for you. You leave him like that on a game, random game where he's hot, and suddenly it's the difference between winning and losing. That's why attempting the shot is so important because 30% of the time, in, in the case that I'm giving you in the example, it's going in. As to where 100% of the time it's not, if you don't take it. So that's why him attempting shots and being okay with bricking them in is, is so important because the threat is more important than the percentages that it pertains to not taking. Schematically for basketball, strictly just for the sake of the floor and the team. So I think it would be a good place for him to go. I've, I've always thought that that was a good plot spot for him. I don't know what they have to give up to get him. Um, if they can do it without giving up the three that they have, the big three that they have, obviously that would be the way to go. If you ask me, I don't, I don't involve um, their 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 through trio in this trade at all. I don't give a damn what's going on. I'm not giving up Draymond Green in this trade, um, and no one's going to be sitting here asking me for Clay and Steph. I'm hanging up the phone. So at this point, I don't know if Golden State should do this, but I do know that Ben Simmons has no leverage to facilitate it himself. And the only way this is going to work is if he pulls a James Harden. Which it seems like he's doing since everybody's reporting that he's gone dark on the team, not talking to anyone in Philadelphia at all. If that's the case, uh, he's trying to make it as murky and as uncomfortable as possible to stay there. He's trying to give the indication that he's going to be somewhat of a problem or may even sit out the season if he's returned back to Philadelphia. We've seen guys sit out. We've seen guys do it before. So, <clears throat> But here's what I would say to Ben Simmons. If the reports are true, again, disclaimer, applied. And we already said you don't have leverage, all that, that's fine. But even more so, you can't really blame Philadelphia 
if the reports are true, if you're mad at what seems, what it seems like you were mad at, because it could be some other stuff going on behind the scenes. Somebody could have said something to his mama. We don't know nothing about it, right? It's a lot of stuff that could happen. But my disclaimer is as follows. If what is said is true, then I can cross this out, what I'm saying. But Ben Simmons, bro, it's your fault you ain't play well. It ain't Philly fault you ain't play well. If you're mad, if you're mad at Joel Embiid for not having your back in a way that 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 would make it seem like he he was okay with how you played at the end of the game when they lost the playoff series, I think he handled that very well. If I was Ben Simmons and I listened to what jo Joel Embiid has said on that stage and I know I just played this way, I'm not mad at Ben Simmons. I'm actually uncomfortable for Ben Simmons because he was put in a weird situation where he know he frustrated and he wants to express his truth, but he's not in a position to do so because it doesn't look good to, for him to do so throwing me under the bus as his teammate. But the reality is, I know I just stunk the Joe joint up. I just cost us the series. He, he has a right to be cussing me out on that stage. And all he's really doing is subtly saying respectfully, maybe we could have did some things differently, subtly saying that maybe I made a mistake that cost us the game. If you pissed at Joel Embiid for that, you, you are the problem, fam. You're the problem, not him. If you mad at Philadelphia for not having your back after your performance, you're the problem. That's what I got to say to that, if. Any of this is true. If it's not, then none of this matters. But like that's that's what I'm saying. And in the event that that is the case, he's the problem because you can't be mad at people for reacting to to your poor play when they are affected by your poor play. I mean, essentially saying I can't make mistakes. Nobody should be mad at me. Everybody's supposed to have my back when I don't necessarily hold up my end of the bargain. No, I need to be held accountable. If I want to get better, I need to be held accountable. Sometimes somebody needs to say, "Hey, you, you're messing up." That's literally okay. Being held accountable is the best thing in the world. As a grown man, I can honestly tell you. If you go too long without discipline, it gets harder and harder to accept truths as you get older about yourself. That discipline will help you. That, that criticism, taking that in without looking at it as haterism, will help you. Because then you can look at certain things that you need to work on and get better at them. If nobody ever points them out, you're relying upon yourself to see the flaws within yourself. And if you're the type of person that has that immovable arrogance to where you blame other people for mistakes that you make, chances are you're not going to hold yourself accountable if no one else does. you got to see the fruit and let them do it. And you certainly can't get mad at a guy like Joel Embiid in a moment of frustration for not exactly saying, my teammate did the best he could, could. he's the guy and stay off his back. No, this nigga cost me the game. Excuse my language. He lost us a game. I'm not very happy with him. Okay? I'm not happy with the guy because he tossed us the game. And I'm trying to be as professional and, and as, 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 as kind and as, as understanding as possible. I've made my mistakes. He's been in this situation before. I'm sure he's had to answer questions about me and he probably took it the right way. But it didn't go this way. It didn't cost us no playoff game. It wasn't no non-attempt three-point uh, dunk or something like that. You know, there are certain things we just have to accept that, hey, people are going to be frustrated. When we drop the ball on a team, our teammates have a right to be frustrated. That's not, let's not make that a thing to where we don't want to talk to nobody. We don't want to have conversations with, with nobody. We don't want to, you know, everybody's our enemy because they told us that we made a mistake that we made. Newsflash, buddy, the mistake was made. That's where you hold yourself accountable so you can not make that mistake again. You don't get mad at people for calling it out. People are going to call it out. By that logic, I don't want to hear anybody complain about anything ever again, whether they got a legitimate gripe or not. So that's my little tangent for that. It's not really substantial if, if that's not what's going on. And I'm fine with it if it's not what's going on. Um, so, yeah, man, that's, that's for everybody. They ain't specific for Ben Simmons. If it don't apply to Ben, cool, but it could apply to you. So it is what it is. Um, my thinking in this situation now, obviously you said all the LA, the California teams. So I'm looking at the other ones. Clippers don't have picks. Lakers don't even look at us. Uh, so Sacramento's the other, other, only other team. I hear that they would be interested in either Tyrese Halliburton or De'Aaron Fox with a bunch of picks. And I laughed, hang up the phone. So you don't really have any options, um, and no leverage. And the only hope you have is to make it as, as difficult and as uncomfortable as possible. Uh, for Philadelphia to bring you back. Problem you're going to deal with is what you, um, I know you already know, this is Daryl Morey, and he ain't going to be moved. He ain't going to be moved. If he's going to make a deal, it ain't going to have nothing to do with anything you're doing. Other GMs, maybe. Philly, this team purposely tanked for like four years straight just to get you and a couple other players and kept a bad coach for many years just because of you, Ben Simmons, because that was your guy. He was bad. Real talk. Brett Brown, great guy, bad coach. 
Great locker room guy, from what I understand. Bad schematics coach. Bad rotations coach. They kept him for like six, seven years. Off the strength of your name. You think they're going to be just quick to, to just do whatever you say? I don't think so. I don't think so. They have their own way of doing things, even if it's not conventional. Is basically what I'm saying to you. Even if it don't make no kind of sense, Philly do it. Yes, they do. Jump away from Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum was a better player that night. They did what they could to jump away from him. <laughs> Gave another team an opportunity to draft that player in the spot that they were in for no apparent reason. That's Philly. So if you think they about to just move because something makes sense or move because you say so, good luck. Good luck. It's Philly. And I could argue one of the reasons why you have some of the problems you have is because it was Philly. One of the worst organizations, in my opinion, in terms of developing players. Even the new guys they got now ain't getting opportunities, and they don't seem to care at all. So I'm of the mindset that uh, it would be nice if Ben Simmons would have did himself a huge favor. And just start the season with Philadelphia being quiet right now, working on his game right now, not letting anybody make up any fuss right now about being wanting out of Philadelphia. All that anger that, that may be there applied, he needs to swallow that regardless if it has legitimate reasons to it or not. He needs to get his butt back on the basketball floor for the Philadelphia 76ers and play like he loves being there. That's how you handle this now. The last time we saw you, you didn't play well, and it was for all the marbles. For the, well, not all the marbles, but it was it was a playoff situation, do or die. You you cannot at all expect people to want to give you what you're asking for. You're the piece they're trying to get rid of, so the only reason why they're going to do that is because it's in their interest to do it. But as far as them just just taking on pennies for the you know for the dollar for your contract, um, nah, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Especially when they believe your value is going to skyrocket, even if you play substantial, just a little bit better, marginally better, your, your your value is going to jump from where it is. There's no reason for them to trade you, other than for the obvious reason in my mind, which is to clear themselves and rid themselves of a very very horrible contract, for which I think that contract is. That Ben Simmons contract is one of the worst in the league, which is why I think most teams should stay away from it, even if they have the pieces in place to do anything about it. It's a horrible contract. Four years left on it. It's bad. So that's how I look at it. But that, that doesn't mean that that's real because if you're thinking the player's going to play his value up, the chances are the value will be played into if he doesn't have injury. So there's a lot of ways to look at that. But he has to get better, obviously, in order for this to come into fruition. So all in all, if the Warriors are inclined to do you a favor and trade for you, um, then that's the only reason why you'll be there. Just cut and dry cut and dry you have no apparent leverage in the situation no different than Dennis Schroeder you guys are at the at the mercy of the market at the mercy of the teams etc um, and that is literally all there is to it uh, so that's what I'm gonna say my name is BDL44 thank you all for watching I'm out